Hello everyone and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the concept of treasury stock. So what is treasury stock? Treasury stock is when the company takes cash, their own cash, and buy back their own stock. It's the opposite of when the company issue sell common stock to the public. What they're doing now is, I have some cash reserve. What do I need to do with them? Well, go ahead and buy back my own stock. When I buy back my own stock, those stocks are called treasury stock. Now, the question is, why do companies buy back their own stock? Well, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you some reasons, and those are not all the reasons, but some of the reasons. And at the end, we'll work accounting. We need to look at the accounting aspect of this. So the first reason is they need those stocks to buy another company. In other words, they want to acquire another company. So what happened oftentimes is company buy other companies by using their own stock. What does that mean? It means you give your own stock to another company and the other company will give up their stock. A case in point is when Microsoft purchased LinkedIn. What happened is this, Microsoft gave out Microsoft shares to LinkedIn shareholders. They gave up their LinkedIn shareholders and they were replaced with Microsoft. So in order to do this exchange, you have to have the stock. To have the stock, you have to buy it back. This is one reason for buying back your own stock is to make a deal with another company and exchange your stock for something else. In this situation, buy the, the other stock. Another reason could be to avoid a hostile takeover. What's a hostile? Someone that don't like you. So one of the primary defenses for management and for current shareholders of a company, if they, don't, if they want to avoid a takeover, is to buy back shares from hostile shareholders. So what you do is you take money and you'll ask people, would you, would you be interested in, in selling your shares? And hopefully you will convince them that some of them will give up their shares, therefore reducing the power of hostile people from taking over your company, replace you as management, or change whatever they want to change. If you want to do that, buy back the share from them. When you buy back the share from them, you are utilizing treasury stock. A third reason could be you want to compensate your employees. So your employees work for you and you can pay them with cash, but also you want them to have something part of the company. You want to give them part of the company. So what you do, you'll give them some treasury stock. But before you give them the treasury stock, you have to buy it. Now, this is very common in startup and technology companies, what they do to entice you to work for them. Because oftentimes, startup don't have the cash. And if they do it, they don't want to spend it on compensation. What they will do to convince you to work for them, if you're talented, if you know AI, if you know data science, they want you, but they, they cannot pay you the amount that you want, but they'll give you shares in return. And this way, they maintain you. Once you become a shareholder, you're part of the company. So it's another way to compensate you and motivate you to stay with the company. A fourth reason could be to boost the stock price. <laughs> what does that mean? Create demand for your own stock. Take cash from your bank account and buy your own stock. Why would you do that? Well, if you do that, when companies do this, it's to show that they have confidence in their own stock. A case in point from the real world is Apple computers. Apple computers, every once in a while, when they feel the stock market is not rewarding the stock price of Apple, what they will do, management decide to take billions of dollars, you heard me, billions of dollars, and buy their own stock to prop up the stock price. How? You create demand. When you create demand, you drive the stock price up. Well, those are some of the reasons. Those are some of the reasons. And also when you buy back your own stock, you have less stock outstanding, you have a higher earnings per share, higher earnings per share lead to a higher stock price, but that's a different story. As far as we are concerned, we need to know the accounting part of it. Now we understand why we buy treasury stock. Now we need to work, how is it recorded? The journal entries, accounting. Now, if you're interested in this topic, obviously I have a finance course, we'll talk about different strategies about treasury stock. But for now, let's focus on the accounting and look at a comprehensive example, show us when we buy stock, treasury stock specifically, treasury stock specifically, and sell it back. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, 
or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, tharhatlectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. Let's look at this series of transaction to illustrate the concept of treasury stock. On May 1st, cyber company buys 1,000 of its own shares at $11.50. Now it's very important, I'm gonna emphasize this point. To understand you are buying back your own stock because later on we would learn about when a company buys back stocks of other companies. When you do that, it's called an investment. So you're buying your own stock. So we purchased the stock at $11.50. May 21st, 20 days later, the company sells 100 out of those 1,000 shares at exactly eleven fifty, the same price. June 3rd, cyber company sells 400 out of the 1,000 shares at $12. $12 is above the cost of $11.50. Now let's talk about $11.50. $11.50 is called the cost, the cost of treasury stock. Now this is important. Why? Because when you sell back the treasury stock, you remove them, you remove them at cost and this method is called the cost method there are two ways to account for treasury stock one is the cost cost method the second one is the par value the par value method is i cover it in my cpa course now if you are a financial accounting students intermediate accounting they only cover the cost method but there's another method how to account for treasury stock it's called the par value method then at some point, we sold the remaining 500 shares. Remember, we still have 500 of the 1,000 at $10, again, below the original price or below the cost. So what I will do now, I'm going to go over each transaction separately, explaining what, what takes place and explaining how does it affect the financial statements. Starting with the first one, we we purchased 1,000 shares at $11.15. What does that mean? It means we paid 11,500, we credit cash, we debit treasury stock. Now the first thing you want to know is treasury stock is a contra equity. What does that mean? It means it's a negative equity. It means it reduces your stockholders equity. Now we have in stockholders equity a balance of negative 11,500, that's why it takes a debit. We have a balance in that account of 11,500. Now we are going to sell 100 shares at 1150. So we went back and we sold 10%, 100 shares. We receive cash, 1,150. We increase cash and we reduce treasury stock, 1,150. Now, remember I told you that we use the cost method. So when we remove treasury stock, we remove at cost. So always we remove at cost. Now, you want to know what's the balance in the treasury stock. How much we have in treasury stock? We still have 10,350 because 11,500 minus the 1150, we still have 10,350. So we bought it at 1150, sold at 1150, only 100 shares, and this is the entry. Now let's assume we sold treasury stock above the cost. What is our cost? Our cost is 1150. Remember June 3rd, we sold 400 shares at $12 above the original cost. Hold on a second, what does that mean? It means we have a gain, we have a profit. 
although I said a gain or a profit, gain or a profit implies something is recorded on the income statement. You can do that, unless, of course, you're Enron. The Enron, they bought and sold their own stocks and they booked the gain, the gain on their income statement. If you have a gain or a profit, in quote, from transacting your own stock, you cannot book that. You cannot book that gain or profit on the income statement. So how do we deal with this? Here's what's going to happen. We sold 400 shares at $12. Cash we received 4,800. We debit cash 4,800. We remove treasury stock, you guessed it, at cost 400 times 1150. And the profit in quote the profit or the gain is 200 what do we credit well we credit an account called paid in capital from treasury stock so this is a new account it's basically an equity account and what we do is we book the gain the gain in that account so what we considered we considered this additional 200 dollar contribution from the owners contribution from the owners now if you go back here now remember now we we changed the balance it was 10,350 now we reduced it 4,600 now if you want to keep track of your treasury stock it's 5,750 after the after the third transaction and you have $200 in paid in capital treasury stock just keep in track of the accounts because that's going to be important so paid in capital we have 200 and treasury stock we still have 5750 treasury stock treasury stock 5750 just keep in track of the balances now we sold the remaining 400 shares at ten dollars how much will we receive in cash we would receive in cash uh, i'm sorry we sold it at uh, let's see the remaining how much did we sell the remaining 400 share, uh, 500 I'm sorry the remaining 500 shares at ten dollars this is the last transaction 500 shares at ten dollars that's gonna give us five thousand dollar in cash we debit cash five thousand we credit treasury stock five hundred times eleven fifty and guess what that's going to be seven fifty seven fifty and if we go back to treasury stock and we credit treasury stock fifty seven fifty the balance in treasury stock is zero because we sold all the treasury stock that we purchased so we debit cash credit treasury stock now we have a gain or profit of seven hundred and fifty because we got I'm sorry, we have a loss, not a loss of 750. A loss of 750. Why? Because we bought them at 5750, we sold them at 5000. What do we do if we have a loss? What is a loss? Loss means you received less money than 1150 per share. How do you book the loss? Here's what you have to do. First, you ask yourself, do I have any paid in capital treasury stock any prior paid in capital treasury stock and the answer in this situation is yes therefore of the 750 200 is booked into paid in capital treasury stock to bring paid in capital treasury stock to a credit of zero so okay you used up 200 what's left from the loss is 5550 a 550 dollars where do you book this 550 dollars you would reduce your retained earnings again you don't book it on the income statement you don't book it as a loss on the income statement what you do is you reduce retained earning directly in other words you don't want to show this loss you don't want to show this loss on the income statement in any way shape or form therefore you debit retained earnings now assuming you had no paid in capital treasury stock balance what will you do if you have no paid in capital treasury stock balance then the whole 750 will go into retained earning let's assume you had let's assume you had in paid in capital treasury stock a thousand 
easily it can absorb the 750 and nothing goes into retained earning because all what you're doing is you are reversing some of the in quote gain that you generated from prior transaction so, so this is the most involved thing when it comes to selling treasury stock make sure you are familiar with the journal entries and the concept let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com there are several reasons for corporation to buy back their own stock which of the following is not so three answers are yes and one is no now because the three are yes start to avoid start to eliminate the yes answers because it should be three of them okay one you buy back your own stock to have them for merger and acquisition yes you do that you do that because when you buy when you want to buy another company if you have treasury stock you could use those treasury stock to buy to merge to exchange it to buy another company so the answer is yes a is out avoid a takeover avoid the takeover yes one of the reasons you buy back stock you buy them from hostile shareholders once you take it away from them they they can no longer take the company that's out as well so we're down to one yes and one no okay so we're down to 50 50. c allow management to assume the voting rights hold on a second are we saying that once we have the treasury stock management owns them and because management owns the stock they have they can vote and the answer this is absolutely incorrect so this is not one of the reasons because by owning the shares you cannot vote treasury stock you, they don't vote the company don't vote for the company itself right outside people vote for the company shares that are outstanding shares in treasury they don't get a vote and they don't receive dividend paying dividend to your treasury stock it's like taking money from one pocket in your pants and putting that money in the other pocket this it's like w w what's the benefit of that right D maintaining market value for the company stock yes they can buy the stock to raise the price because when you buy the stock you create demand as, as you create demand as you create demand for the stock the stock price will go up that's another reason but to allow management to vote that's absolutely incorrect what should you do you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice lectures exercises that's going to help you whether you are a student taking financial accounting or any other accounting course studying for your certifications cpa cma or any other professional certification invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe